if pro wrestlers wish to keep a low profile, WWE is certainly not the place to be. The superstars of WWE are some of the most popular celebrities wherever they go. Whether they are in Los Angeles or Saudi Arabia, everyone wants to have their pictures taken with the superstars. In fact, fame and recognition are two of the main reasons why pro wrestlers want to get into the WWE. However, everybody has to start somewhere. Before Stone Cold became the most popular wrestler in the world, he was jobbing to other stars and made them look good. Wrestling companies often bring in relatively obscure talent to put over other stars, while at the same time analyze their potential and their ceiling. This would mean that some of the most popular stars in the company appeared on WWE programming before, but the audience did not have a clue who they were. My name is John, and in this video we take a look at 10 superstars who appeared on WWE programming before they became famous. Very few superstars can come back from the proverbial quicksand in WWE, which is being given a ridiculous gimmick that is destined to fail. Superstars such as Perry Saturn and Charlie Haas found out about this the hard way, and after they were demoted in the company, it wasn't long before they were given their marching orders. However, Damian Sandow managed to defy these odds and somehow made his Mizdow gimmick one of the more popular gimmicks in the company. While the fans chanted for Mizdow every week, the WWE brass still weren't impressed with the superstar and released him in 2016 along with a handful of other talent. However, before Santa became the intellectual savior of the masses and won the Money in the Bank contract, he appeared on WWE programming as Idol Stevens and was signed to a contract for a year. Stevens made his debut in WWE in 2007 but was soon sent back to OVW before the superstar was released from his contract. The current NXT champion has established himself as one of the best heels in the company today and has been on a roll this year. Champa has been put in numerous highly acclaimed matches with the likes of Johnny Gargano and Aleister Black and is considered to be one of the best workers in WWE's developmental brand. While Champa has achieved considerable amounts of success in NXT, he was seen on programming over a decade ago when the fans weren't aware of who he was. Champa initially appeared on SmackDown as Muhammad Hassan's lawyer Thomas Whitney before working on shows like Velocity and Heat. Champa then signed a developmental contract with the WWE but would soon be released from his developmental contract. This proved to be a blessing in disguise for the superstar who then plied his trade on the independent circuit, becoming one of the hottest stars on the independent scene which would lead to him signing a new contract with the WWE in 2016. If there was one superstar that can be labeled as the unlucky one in WWE, it's definitely Mr. Kennedy. Earmarked to become a world champion, Mr. Kennedy defeated multiple former world champions in his first year on SmackDown and was even given the Money in the Bank briefcase, almost guaranteeing him of winning a world title. However, injuries and violating wellness policies meant Mr. Kennedy never truly realized his potential, and before long he was sent packing from the company. But before Mr. Kennedy became one of the biggest heels in the WWE, he was seen backstage hounding Brock Lesnar for his autograph. Mr. Kennedy's first appearance on WWE programming saw him act as one of the groupies backstage on SmackDown, waiting for Lesnar's arrival. When the youngest WWE champion in history did arrive, he was more interested in signing the shirt of a woman than giving Mr. Kennedy what he wanted. If you pay close attention, you can also see a young CM Punk congratulating Lesnar. Years later, both the stars were managed by Paul Heyman, thus becoming Paul Heyman guys in the WWE. The lunatic friend shocked the world when he captured the WWE title a couple of years ago and has been on a tear since his return from injury. Ambrose along with Rollins and Reigns made their debut in 2012 and the Hounds of Justice ran roughshod taking out superstars that crossed them. All three stars won the world title in WWE. And Ambrose in particular is popular among the fans for his outrageous stunts and little care for his own regard. However, before Ambrose appeared on WWE TV along with Rollins and Reigns, he was seen on WWE programming as one of The Undertaker's druids at the Royal Rumble in 2006. Ambrose, who was working as Jon Moxley at the time, also competed in a number of dark matches for the company. But the fans could clearly see Ambrose's face when he accompanied The Undertaker at the Royal Rumble.
The Boss is undoubtedly one of the most popular superstars in the WWE today and is a four-time Raw Women's Champion. Sasha Banks has already etched her name in wrestling glory by being one of the first women to close a pay-per-view and participating in the first ever Women's Hell in a Cell bout. While The Boss has been busy over the past few years revolutionizing the women's division, her first appearance on WWE programming was rather imperceptible. Sasha, along with Alexa Bliss and Charlotte, accompanied Triple H during his entrance at WrestleMania 30 just moments before Triple H faced Daniel Bryan. All three superstars have since won the Women's Championship in the WWE, but it won't be long before The Boss once again sets her sights on the Raw Women's Championship. The Swiss Cyborg is one of the most underrated and underappreciated talents in WWE. While the fans want to see more of Cesaro, Vince McMahon believes that the superstar doesn't connect with the fans because of his European accent. However, Cesaro is also a former US champion and has recently held tag team titles with Sheamus. Cesaro has become a mainstay in the WWE, but he appeared on WWE TV long before he even made his debut inside the ring. Cesaro donned the role of a security guard for Shane McMahon during Shane's feud with D-Generation X, and was seen standing behind Shane years ago on Raw. Looking back at the video, Cesaro wasn't the only prominent face that was aiding Shane as EC3 could be seen playing the role of the security guard as well. Years later, both the stars have managed to become relevant in the organization. Back when the women were seen as nothing more than divas and side attractions in the WWE, Lita stepped up and proved that the women can steal the show. Lita and Trish made history when they became the first two women to ever close an episode of Raw, and Lita influenced a whole generation of women that have played a big part in revolutionizing the women's division today. But before Lita won numerous titles in the WWE, she appeared on WWE programming as one of the Godfather's hoes. The Godfather used to bring out women every week as the women lined up behind the superstar and were dubbed the Ho Train. While the fans did not know who Lita was back then, just a year later she started competing in the WWE and soon became one of the best women's wrestlers on the planet. The former WWE Champion is regarded by many as one of the best workers in the industry, and AJ Styles has been in the wrestling business for nearly two decades. Styles initially signed a contract with WCW, and when the company folded, he plied his trade on the independents before becoming a mainstay in TNA. Styles won numerous world titles before signing a WWE contract. However, before the Phenomenal One made his debut at the Royal Rumble in 2016, he worked a couple of matches for the company as an enhancement talent. Styles faced the Hurricane on an edition of WWF Metal back in 2002 and put up a decent fight, which surprised the fans. However, the Hurricane eventually picked up the victory, and AJ later signed with TNA. 16 years after wrestling on WWF Metal, Styles successfully defended the WWE title at WrestleMania 34. When Daniel Bryan's Cinderella story saw its conclusion at WrestleMania 30, the fans were ecstatic for the bearded superstar. Considered to be the biggest underdog of this generation, Bryan had to fight his way to the top and had to deal with constant criticism from the WWE brass and their willingness to overlook the superstar's rise to prominence. It was the fans that backed the WWE management into a corner, forcing the company to put the World Heavyweight title on Bryan. But before coming to WWE, Bryan cemented his status as one of the best wrestlers on the planet, putting on numerous classics on the independent scene. However, before Bryan became the American Dragon that was wowing the fans around the world, he appeared on WWE programming, most notably on an edition of Velocity. This was where he took on a very young John Cena. Brian worked as an enhancement talent on a couple of occasions before working his way to the top of the indies and was then signed to a WWE contract. The Second City Sane is arguably one of the most popular superstars in WWE history and broke the record for the longest WWE Championship reign in the modern era. Punk was never supposed to make it in the WWE, but the Straight Edge Savior was too determined to let anything get in between him and the WWE title. CM Punk initially broke through the ranks in ECW, putting on numerous memorable matches with the likes of John Morrison for the ECW title. However, before Punk became one of the hottest new faces on the ECW brand, he was seen on WWE programming at WrestleMania 22 when he served as an extra during John Cena's entrance. 
Years later, Punk would be embroiled in a memorable feud against the leader of the C-Nation and would even beat Cena in his hometown of Chicago to win the WWE title at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view in 2011 in what is considered to be one of the best matches of all time. And these are 10 superstars who appeared on WWE programming before they were famous. I hope you're all having an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching Wrestling Hub and I'll see you later with more videos.